Okay, guys. Um, since we're emergency medicine physicians, we're going to move a little bit on the fly, so we're going to bump the schedule a little bit. So the next thing we're going to talk about, um, which I think is probably an appropriate time, is um, ERAS and kind of managing the uh, application system and processes. Uh, to do this, we have Lexi Mannix and Melissa Parsons, who are both uh, assistant program directors at uh, UF Jacksonville, and Lexi's also an associate clerkship director there. So they have a lot of expertise on this topic. Uh, and thank you, guys. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, I'm Lexi Mannix. As Gannon just kind of shared with you, I'm the APD and ACD at UF Jax, which is actually also where I did my residency. And I am also uh, SIM trained. I did a SIM fellowship. And I'm Melissa Parsons. I am also APD at UF Jax, where I also trained. Um, so, so we're, we're going to be talking to you about taming ARIS. Um, we do have kind of a slight disclosure. So we're the co-founders of SheMD, which is a virtual community of practice aimed specifically kind of at women, but really applicable to everyone in medical education. So aimed at pre-med students, med students, and residents. So have you guys ever felt like kind of everything is on fire when you're in med school? Like the world around you, your life, you're just kind of sitting there studying and everything around you is kind of going crazy. And do you feel like that when you're looking at applying to residency and going into the match? Because I sure know I did. I did too. And one of the things um, that we really thought through as we were doing this talk is how do, we, how do we put out fires, right? I mean, your life is on fire. How do we put it out? How do we get control of it? Um, I am APD, an emergency med doc, and then also stepmom to two and married to a firefighter. So what I have learned is it's way easier to put out little flames than big fires. So that's our goal with this talk, is to put things into perspective as little flames that you can deal with along the way instead of big fires. Um, so one of the first things you have to know is you have to actually be able to find the website, right, for your ass. That's one of the important things is figuring out where it is. Um, and I haven't been on this website in a while because I haven't been in your shoes for, well, I'm not even going to tell you how long, but it's been a minute. Um, but when I got on this website, they have a ton of resources for you guys. And I actually think probably at this stage in May, the most important one is that you can actually go on and start filling out your application on a PDF version now um, and before you actually have to apply. So you can kind of see what's required and what you want to be prepared to put in there. So what's ERAS or ERAS? Is it just another... Um, mnemonic that you need to know, right? Like SAM and ASAP, and it's all these random letters that people are throwing at you all the time. But I would argue this is probably the most important one. So what it stands for is it's the Electronic Residency Application Service. And it's basically a place where you're gonna dump all of the awesome things that you've done, right, in the past few years, and even maybe before med school. All of the presentations you've had, all the leadership positions, everything that you've done is gonna go into this service, and then they're gonna share it with all the residency programs that you're interested in. Um, so like I said, there's a lot of tools on the website. The most important one probably being the timeline and the PDF that you can go in and input your own information. The timeline for you guys applying, if you're applying in the next cycle, is not available yet, um, but we'll kind of run through that. I mean, this is their user guide, which is like, 60 something pages I think but it's there this is for last year you can still look at it and see if there's any information you don't get from us that you want so as Melissa kind of mentioned the timeline unfortunately isn't 100% out for you guys but this is a general timeline we want you to think about Eris is gonna open sometime in June you're gonna be able to apply sometime in kind of early September we will get the applications sometime mid-September um, and then the MSPE, which we'll get into, is going to come out in October. Um, a lot of EM programs, I'm just going to tell you now, wait a little bit and wait until they get that MSPE to offer interviews. So all of your friends going into other specialties may have a bunch of interviews lined up before you've heard back. It's okay. It's not a big fire. I promise. But what is a big fire is if you don't know the dates and let's say you miss when you should be applying. Um, sending in your application in December probably isn't going to work as well as sending in your application when it's due in September. So um, this is actually really important that you kind of get, get the dates, know your deadlines. Um, it's also really important for the rest of your life, but super important for applying to residency. So we're going to talk to you now about the components, so what you should be prepared to enter 
when it opens. So the first two kind of go together. So there's your personal information and there's your CV. Um, and this is going to be, you're going to put it in in kind of two ways, right? So your personal information section is all of the stuff that's on your CV, but you're filling it into blanks on um, the ERS website or on that PDF if you try to fill it out in advance. Your CV is something you're going to upload, but it's going to have all the same content, right? So the research that you've done, the volunteer work that you've done, the, um, your extracurriculars, your hobbies, those sorts of things. That's all going to go in kind of two places. And so as a student, it seems a little bit redundant, right? But we may look at applications completely differently. I like the fill in the blanks. I can go exactly where I'm looking for and find your hobbies and be like, oh, this person loves fishing. Cool, so do I. Or, oh, this person loves rock climbing, you know, and I can find that there, whereas Lexi may prefer to go on and see your CV and how you formatted it and how you've personalized it to be all about you and not kind of the click box through way that um, Eris does it. So both of them are important. Make sure they're up to date. Make sure they're accurate and make sure you know what's in them. So another thing you're going to have to upload is your transcript. And I don't mean you're going to have to upload it. Your school's going to have to upload it but please make sure it's uploaded. That's on you. We can't make any edits to our transcripts now, right? Like, what's done is done, your grades are what they are, but if there are any issues with your grades, whether you've had to remediate a class or maybe got a low grade, or if you go to the same place where you went to undergrad, there's a chance your undergrad grades will be submitted in that transcript. So just be ready to talk about it. Make sure it's uploaded and be prepared to discuss anything on there. Additionally, you're going to have to make sure these get uploaded, whether it's Comlex or USMLE or both, whatever you've taken. Again, this isn't something that you can change, but you need to make sure it's uploaded. If you have taken step two, I would also make sure that that's uploaded so that we can see it. All right, so this is my favorite section. Let's talk about your photograph. So, none of these are appropriate photographs for ERS, okay? There should not be alcohol in your photo. Uh, there should not be fish in your photo, even though that would be mine if I had a choice again. Um, and you probably shouldn't use a selfie, okay? Does that mean that you need to go and have professional photos taken of you? I, I still am not sure I have any of those. So you probably don't. Um, there is a study that was done, and this is looking at dermatology. This is not for EM match, um, but that looked at the role of the photo and match success rates in derm um, applicants. And basically what it said was people who wore glasses, jackets, and smiled were more likely to match. Does that actually mean that those people were more likely to match? No, it's just correlative data. But I don't want you to go out and buy glasses if you don't wear glasses. Please don't, <laughs> right? Um, but I do think it's helpful to kind of have your photo look professional-ish, right? It can be done on your iPhone. Um, and to look similar to what you look like on interview day, right? Because that's your photo is how I, as an assistant residency director, remember who you are a month later or two months later when I'm making my match list, right? So if you have a jacket already, because you're going to need it for interview season, sure, put it on, stand in front of a wall, take a photo. It's easy. Don't go out and buy anything special. Like, don't go buy glasses, please. Um, but know that looking professional does kind of matter. We actually will document when people look vastly different than their photo um, because it helps us to remember who you guys are. Next is the MSPE, so the Medical Student Performance Evaluation. This is your dean's letter, and I'm going to be honest, it's kind of like getting a letter from your mom, right? It's like all the awesome things that you've done and how proud they are of you, and it's a great example of all the great things that you've done in medical school. Um, it also includes that either quartile or quintile that you're in. So this letter is going to show us where you fall in perspective to your class, like we were just talking about in the last lecture. What's important about this letter for you guys is that you read it and you proofread it, okay? There's a chance that there could be something in there that maybe you didn't do or they missed something or the wrong pronoun or name was used somewhere in there. So please, please, please take a look at these. You do not want to be blindsided by something when you're sitting in an interview that was in your MSP. Um, so the next thing is going to be SLOWS and other letters of rec. Um, and so I think that you guys have had a talk on SLOWS already today, maybe. Um, I know we kind of got pushed up a little bit, but I think that already happened. <laughs> um, your SLOWS are going to be really important. You want to make sure that you shine on your away rotations, which I think you guys also get a talk on that, right? 
Um, but make sure that your slows are uploaded. Make sure that you're sending them to the places that you want them to go. Um, you will kind of have to push people a little bit sometimes. You, depending on when you do your rotations, you may be waiting um, to get that third slow put in or a second slow put in. Um, and so don't be annoying, but be persistent. Make sure they get put in there. So while the MSPE is kind of the letter from your mom, right, these are the letter from our friends. So Dave Story's gonna write me a letter and it's gonna be my friend telling me what you did. I trust my friends. I see them all the time. I talk to them all the time. So that's kind of how we view these letters. Yeah, they're really one of the most important parts of figuring out, like, do you shine at a shop that looks like mine, right? Um, you know, other people, you, you may go to an away rotation and maybe not get the best letter, but if it's at a place that's nothing like where I work, I may love that anyway, right? <laughs> I mean, I'm just being honest. So make sure your slows are in, make sure they're up. Your other letters of rec, especially coming from people that either aren't an academic EM or aren't an EM at all, um, are helpful, but maybe not as important. I don't know that there's anything as important um, for us as a slow. Next is your personal statement. Um, you've had to write these multiple times, right? You write one for med school, you may have even had to write them while applying for your externships. Um, the personal statement is basically where you tell us who you are and why EM is the right place for you. If there are any red flags on your transcript or in your grades like we talked about earlier, this is a really great place to discuss them so that we know you're not running and hiding from them, right? Um, but in all honesty, having an average personal statement is fine. You don't have to have the most ridiculous personal statement and try to stand out. Um, just share with us who you are, because the most important thing is for us to find residents that fit our program. I think the hardest part about the personal statement is that you're trying to write it a lot of times when you potentially haven't even done an EM rotation yet. Um, I know that was true for me. Um, and so that part is really hard and it's okay to start it and leave some pieces and kind of fill it in as you go. It just has to be done when you're ready to apply. So now we're gonna go through the rules because we think it's super important that you guys know the rules before you apply. So definitely don't lie. Don't lie about the things you've done. Please don't embellish and don't plagiarize. So be yourself. This one is really important. Um, I told you guys already I love fishing, right? I'm at Florida, so we have a lot of fishing opportunities. I had a student that came and rotated with us that actually um, said out loud that she really loved fishing, which I, my ears, lit, I, I was excited. I was like, cool, let's chat about this. She had, knew nothing about fishing. She just said it because she thought it was what we wanted to hear. That's not what I want to hear. I want to hear what you guys really like and who you are. Be yourself in the process, okay? Don't make something up because you think it'll work. Be ahead of schedule. That's why we shared the schedule with you. And you guys are already ahead of schedule just by being here. But I think this is super important, not only for this, but for your whole life. I live my life by the motto that early is on time, on time is late, and late is unacceptable. And I think that's a really good thing to apply when you're thinking about your professional life and maybe your personal life too. Okay, and then be neat, be concise, and proofread, right? Not proofread, but proofread. So this is super important because you don't wanna certify your application until you're sure. And why do I say that, right? We live in a world where you can go back and edit your Instagram post afterwards and like change the words when you make a mistake. That's not true for this, okay? Once you certify, and I, I like the verbiage that they use, um, your application will be irrevocably locked and no changes will be permitted, okay? So you can't go back in and edit your personal statement because you spelled something wrong and you can't go back in and edit any part of it. So make sure before you hit that button that says that you've certified that you have everything ready to go. So the SVI, have you guys had that lecture yet? Okay, um, it was supposed to be before, but you will get plenty of information about the SVI. It's, it's what? Right after lunch. Right after lunch, great. Um, basically what we want you to know about this is the SVI was kind of made to help evaluate professionalism and communication and interpersonal skills and we're kind of piloting it in, it in EM. But in all honesty, that's kind of what the slows do for me personally, right? Um, because my friends are telling me how your communication skills are and how you interact with others. So don't freak out about this. We're still not 100% sure what to do with it, 
Um, so we'll see how this plays out over the next few years. But please don't let this defer or deter you from applying to EM. So how many of you are in long-term relationships or married or considering the couples match? You don't have to be considering couples match, just long-term. Just in general. Anyway. Okay. All right. So when you decided you were going to get into this relationship, did you make an Excel spreadsheet of the pros and cons of that human before deciding you would go on a date with them or consider them long-term? Probably not. Did you make a checklist where they had to have all of these certain features and you kept it somewhere where you could actually check the boxes off? Okay, so if you did, fine. Um, <laughs> I did not. I don't think Lexi did either. But that's kind of what I think a lot of us, how we approach the match, right? And how we approach this process is like, we wanna find that perfect place that has all these pros and absolutely no cons and that checks every box on our, on our list. And I'm not sure how applicable that is, right? There's not a perfect program, okay? There's, there's not, we don't, like, there's not a ranking of programs, there's not a list you can find where it's like, this is the most perfect program ever and everybody should go here because all of our programs are different and they, they reach people in different places, right? Different types of people that want to be different types of EM docs. Um, so, so it's about not necessarily finding the perfect place, but it's about finding the perfect place for you, right? So that's why we really want you to be yourself on your application and on your interview day. Well said. So we hope that we have um, made this application process go from the big fire to a little flame and that you guys totally feel like you can rock it in a few months. Any questions? Awesome, thank you. Thank you.